Welcome to Look Behind the Look, the new podcast that examines iconic looks in film, television, music, and fashion history. I'm your host, Tiffany Bartok. I'd like to share a very special message from our premier sponsor, Presentation Folder. The beauty market is a billion-dollar industry that's ever-evolving and adjusting to the times, but the one thing that remains consistent is the need for strong brand identity and representation. Whether you're an indie beauty brand, entrepreneur, or pro artist, printed products and packaging are one of the most common facets of branding and recognition. Cosmetic packaging is constantly changing, and with consumer demand for sustainability, it's necessary to find vendors who can bring your vision and ethos to life. Presentation Folder is a print industry leader committed to innovation, design, sustainability, and most importantly, their customers. They work to ensure every project stands out and deliver the very best service to you, on time and at a price that's fair to everyone. Presentation Folder is a family-owned business with over 40 years of experience delivering printed products. You can now customize any product or packaging to fit your needs. Everything from cosmetic and skincare packaging to posters, event materials, business cards, and more. Our listeners can save 10% on their next order. Visit presentationfolder.com and use promo code Look Behind the Look. And use promo code Look Behind the Look, one word, to get 10% off any new custom print or packaging order placed. Bring your print to life the PFI way. Hi, everybody. Well, between watching Framing Britney and bidding farewell to call my agent and catching up on all the Golden Globe nominee films, I am happy to report we were still able to get this episode ready for you in time for Valentine's Day. This episode is with two wonderful people that I'm so lucky to know and I'm forever grateful to them for creating space in their insanely busy schedules to talk to me about how they work together creatively. I have to tell you how I met my guests. Gregory was introduced to me by my dear friends Troy Surratt and Nathaniel Hawkins and we rendezvoused in my hometown of Portland and we were all there for a makeup event and um, it being my hometown of course disarmed me and being surrounded by my closest friends added to that and what I couldn't believe was how funny Gregory was. I definitely burned a whole week's worth of calories from him making me laugh and if you've ever taken one of his classes or seen one of his lives you'll know that he just never stops. He's constantly going and he has more energy than the entire world combined. He's absolutely infectious. Gregory does Dita's makeup, of course, very often and is one of the most in-demand artists in Hollywood. He also does Gwen Stefani and Victoria Beckham, Katy Perry, Cher, Sienna Miller, da, 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 Anne Heche, Fran Drescher, Liza Minnelli. I mean, they've all had the Gregory experience. And he is the director of makeup artistry for MAC Cosmetics. Make sure you're following him on Instagram, of course. Dita Sai. Dita, Dita and I have been working on something for a while, and I will have news for you about all of that. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoy a little sample of what it's like to spend time with Dita. I know anyone who's listening or watching probably knows Dita as the queen of burlesque and an innovative businesswoman and a ravishing beauty, but Dita is more than a living doll. Yes, I often describe her as fine art, but she is the hardest working woman I have ever seen. She's tremendously hands-on in everything she does. She can solve any problem, command order, and lead an ensemble without letting on to feeling any pressure. I've gotten the opportunity to watch her rehearse from 9 a.m. straight into a New Year's Eve performance without a hitch, and it was a masterclass in showbiz leadership. An intensely creative, innovative, intelligent entrepreneur and performer and a woman who leads with class, grace, and supreme integrity. I love and respect Dita more every time I get to spend time with her, and she's someone who I am very proud to know and share a space with. So welcome to one of our sessions of Beauty Talk. Yes, 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 all three of us have experienced deeper conversations than these, but here is some fun talk for you to enjoy for now. Can you guess what lipstick I have on? Oh, it's, it's your guys's. It's. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have a few of those in my freezer still. <laughs> the freezer. I put them in the freezer in the, in the, um, I hoard them and I love them and I get compliments on them every time it's your, uh, Viva Glam, obviously. And you guys work together on that collab, right? 
We work together yeah, on the lipstick that you have, not yes. the Viva yeah. Glam. The Viva oh, Glam was before that yeah. and a different tube. And it was just like a, you know, back when I did, back when I did Viva Glam, um, <laughs> it was like just a regular Viva Glam. They didn't do any special packaging and they definitely didn't let me do red because they were like, we need to sell big volume and people aren't wearing red lipstick. And I was like, okay. So I used to have to pretend I was wearing it and I'd say, oh, I have lots of layers on and I'd wear the kind of like, it was kind of a pinky, dark pinky beige. So I'd have to like layer that to kind of like. Do you remember what year that was? When was somebody not wearing red? What is, what's wrong? Well, I think it wasn't that people were wearing red. I think they were just like, we can't, I think they've come to their senses since, but the first, all the first Viva Glam colors were like more neutral and like That's user true. friendly. And it was only in recent years, I think, right, Gregory, that they did like more um, like, fun colors when they yeah. first started like when viva glam first launched it, the first one viva glam one was like a brick red and i remember it was like a universal red and then to Dita's point it, it shifted towards more neutrals because the whole point was to raise money to sell mm -hmm. and like neutrals mm -hmm. as we know for the you know the populist community tend to sell a little bit more but they did shift a little bit like miley's was a bright pink and um uh rosalia that just came out was like this dynamic red, but uh, mm -hmm. I always thought to myself, why isn't Dita's red? Because hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it was too, back then, so. That's, was that before or after your personal red? That was before, so that was okay. the last one. That one came out with my book, my Your Beauty Mark book. Oh, is it this book? No, this is the one. I was actually I just sitting here going, oh my God, I'm such an idiot. I don't even have my beauty book next to me. Well, that's why I I'm here, here Dita. Too. That's it why I'm on the here. coffee table. Of yes, yes. It's one of the three Dita books that I have, and there's more on the way, I know. Um, yes. So so in this book that you put together, did you ever consult with Gregory about any of, of it? Or were you like, I'm good. I know. I know what I'm writing. And, and... Um, yeah, I mean, Gregory's featured in the book for sure. Right. Um, I can't remember. It's been so long now. I remember. <laughs> we spent like six <laughs> years writing that book. It was a major, I mean, it's a huge book and it was a big, big undertaking and um, it was ever evolving. And so it's hard. It's foggy. A lot of the creation of it with Rose Apodaca is a little bit foggy, but I know you are well represented in there, Gregory. And I know, I'm sure I asked you, you know, you said you remember, so I'll let you. Certainly. No, no, totally. Um, Rose and I go way, way back. I met Rose even before I met Dita, because Dita and I met in 2006, if memory serves me well. And uh, mm -hmm. I remember when this book was in um, its infantile state, Rose and I getting together about three or four different times. I have actually photographs of us meeting together and just talking, talking the beauty of the philosophy of beauty, what I loved about a lot of people that collaborated in Dita's book were people who have their own point of view on beauty, but who align with Dita's point of view as well. And that was, you know, because just my relationship with Dita, of course, was represented beautifully in that book. Oh, the cat. Hi, I know. Kate. She's sorry, I got she's distracted. very aggressive with her love. So I just oh, have to pick her up or else. I love that. Hi. But we did, we did, Rose and I did talk a lot about, you know, just, you know, beauty on different levels and and um doing a lot of contributions on specific makeup tips and techniques so 2006 is when you and dita met and then the so, book the book was 2014 uh let me look i'm gonna look right now yeah 2014 um how did you guys meet yeah. tell me that while i'm looking for the date i have you to get my on, granny glasses on, on she swiped right and i said yes yeah <laughs> Come on now, this is 2006. I know. There was no swiping. It was the one. No. It was um, when I was working with Viva Glam and I'd kind of gone through, I'd been having a hard time finding makeup artists to do me as good as I did me or better. And I mean, I'm not going to name any names, but I work with a lot of famous people. <laughs> and I'm not saying, you know, I just couldn't find the right fit. Like I felt like I always go to the mirror at the photo shoot and like make my lip draw my lips bigger or um you know draw my cat eye bigger so I kind of was struggling and I was working a lot and uh I was being glam girl and I think we kept asking like 
Mac people, um, my Mac contacts, like who, who we should try. And it came to you, you know, that's not to diminish the work of the other artists. It just like, it took me a long time to find a really good fit where it was, you know, they were, you know, you know, all of it. It's cause it's not just about the makeup. It's also like, how do you feel on the shoot? How long do they take? <laughs> like yeah. sometimes when I'm sitting in the makeup chair and I'm like there for two and a half hours, I get just like, I can't, you know, I, I, that made me I, done it. I could have done this in 30 minutes myself, but on the same token, I don't want to always do it, you know, cause it's, it can be exhausting to do all the hair, makeup and everything yourself and then step on set and then try to fix it. I mean, I do it all the time, but it's not always, it's not always my preference. Right, 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 when right. I, when I got, it's so funny because I, I, of course, heard of Dita before meeting and actually even, I mean, quite a long time ago because we had a lot of mutual friends, fun, funnily enough. And, you know, it was one of those kind of things where, and Dita fits the kind of aesthetic of makeup that I love. I've always loved classic vintage beauty. I love old movies. I love a really pristine, technically perfect, you know, visage and, and technique with makeup. And it was really funny because, and Dita will remember when we, the first job we did was a two day photo shoot, like so many looks and it was all shooting vintage Mugler. And the photographer said, well, I really want to do a smoky eye and a pale lip. And it was funny because I had brought, like it was my first day working with her. And I brought, I think every red lipstick that was ever created and every false lash that was ever invented. And we used none of it. <laughs> I thought, and I was thinking to myself, oh my gosh, she's never going to know that I know how to do. Enough and you know, you know what I remember about that too, is like, of course I like, we loved each other and hit it off immediately, but I was like skeptical. I was like, he's talking a big talk about cat eyes and red <laughs> lips, but we'll see, you know? And then what shoot did we do after that? I thought it was maybe the Cheryl Neal's one. No, it was actually, I thought it was too. It was actually Peach John, which was, okay. you know. Which we got all, to do. Oh, oh yeah. like there's the camera. So, yeah. And it's funny um, because I remember on day two, we kind of really bonded over our love of Xanadu. Oh God, yes. You, I mean, I, I was just looking at pictures of Xanadu like the other day, embarrassingly enough. I guess it's not embarrassing. It's you guys. Oh, I'm talking oh. to you guys. <laughs> um, it's funny because I remember on that shoot, and it's I, I, which one the first one or first one and we could tell a billion stories i'm sure but please do one thing that really pops in my brain is that i was starting to do her eyebrows and i've always been a fan of using shadow in eyebrows it's just been my thing and i remember pulling out carbon like black eyeshadow and i remember dita going is that black and i was like oh my gosh is it too strong for her and i said it is she goes oh thank god i have makeup artists try to use dark brown on me my hair is black so, oh, I love that. I I remember that made well. in heaven. Oh. <laughs> so so you guys can can I talk a little bit more about how how you guys work together because this is what I've been thinking about all morning is you know, um I've talked to people who have to design looks for like Moulin Rouge Broadway show and then they have to the actor takes it on and the actor takes a lot of say in the look that's being created because that's part of their character and I, Dita not to say that your character but your look is is so well developed over the years and it, it must be that you felt you were still in collaboration with Gregory rather than handing him over your face you know and how does that relationship work I feel like you must have a lot of trust there you know um, that he understands what you want to portray yeah I mean especially because one of the things that was always happening to me on photo shoots was like let's get a different Dita you know and let's uh -huh. and I kind of like learned pretty quickly on there was a point where I was like you know what I was sitting I was doing a photo shoot in Paris and the photographer who will remain nameless and she was doing this book about women women and using all these famous women and she She's like, this book is about like the beauty of like women and everything. And then I remember she told the makeup artist like um, to you, you know, use hardly any makeup. But she goes, and also accentuate a little bit the dark circles. Oh. And she said that's the makeup artist. And I was like, oh, whoa, 
you know, I get like trying to get like the natural beauty, but also like, if you're going to do that, you should be, um, you know, trying to bring out the best in someone anyway, like light it nicely. I'm fine with being seen without makeup, but also, yeah. you know, on my own terms. But I think I realized at that moment, I was like, you know what? Would Marlena Dietrich have stood for this shit? No. no. And I was suddenly like thinking about like the glamour and what it means to me for my confidence and what makeup means and my hair and all the things that I've, you know, you know, I'm an, I, for anybody watching this doesn't know, I'm a natural blonde. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I just feel like I found my confidence through dyeing my hair and wearing it in this hairstyle and wearing makeup. And so I, I, at a point I was like, I'm tired of everybody wanting to see like, you know, let's show a different Dita, let's show you natural. And I just thought like, but it makes me feel like insecure and weird. And, uh, you know, I don't like how it feels. So I kind of finally went, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore. Well, what's the goal of that? What is, I yeah, understand it's something to do and it's for them. It's a selfish it's goal for them. for them. Not for it's me, for them, for them. Like I did this amazing different thing and showed her in a different way. And I was like, but that's okay to show me in a different way. But think about how you can do that in a way that doesn't like make me feel weird. Cause why am I here? You know, I'm not here. I, I'm not a model. I'm not a model. I'm a performer, mm -hmm. uh, author, lingerie designer that is trying to, you know, usually doing these photo shoots to promote what I'm selling, which is mm -hmm. beauty, glamour, um, fun for whimsicality, like, my show and I just thought like this isn't helping sell what I you know I call myself a glamour evangelist because I want to go over the top with glamour because even if a little bit rubs off on somebody it's kind of like that's you know I'm preaching just for maybe somebody will take it to heart and be like you know the day I started wearing just a little red lipstick was a nice day so um yeah that's and I think and I, I love all that I, I, think I love that too like I was never trying to reinvent Dita at all. Why would I? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like I, one thing I loved about her before I met her was her aesthetic. You mm -hmm. know, the way that she has art directed her life and herself exactly the way that feels right to her. So, and also too, like, you know, and, and, and I love that type of aesthetic anyway. And I think with, if anything, like, again, I, it's just always about <laughs> making Dita the A plus version of herself. But mm -hmm. I remember, Dita and I very early on in our our relationship, you know, talking about, isn't it going to be fun? Dita was like, isn't it going to be great when I'm 98 looking through all the pictures of me looking the same, you know? And I, <laughs> I love that. Though, but it is, and it isn't, you know. I mean, of course, there's little things like maybe adding a little highlight or a little gloss on the mouth or a, a, an aqua blue shadow. But it's like we're not. Why? Why deviate from something that's incredible you know and mm -hmm. I hate the word but like you know when somebody is a brand for lack of a better word like you think of Liza Minnelli like you're not gonna see her with no lashes on the top and the bottom right you know right. it's like asking Mickey Mouse to take his ears off right <laughs> that's, that's so Mickey. true not that's to so true. Dita or Liza with Mickey Mouse but you understand no but that's really true thing you know being Yes, so. it's it it's a similar thing when they try to take like athletes and things and and glam them up, you know what I mean? It's like did you really show them something that they wanted to see see or you know, did you just put them in a costume? I feel well, like de taking it down sometimes can be like a a costume that somebody wanted wants just wants to experiment with for their own benefit. If I had a dollar for every shoot that I've been on with Dita that someone said, "We have an idea." I mean, I'd be retired, like with a staff of 50, you know what I mean? Like, and I think that Dita, to your point, you know, um, people always want to take that credit. Oh, I got her to not wear a red lipstick. It was my oh, sure. that we had her in bored straight hair, you know, that kind of thing. That's and I remember so doing a major publication with Dita, which will remain nameless, or if she chooses. There's going to be a lot of remaining. Name, rename, exactly, the remain nameless. And I remember it was a national fashion magazine, United, US magazine major. And I remember it was uh, an article on um, an article on Dita. And basically the editor was insistent that there was a pared down version of Dita, you know, an undone. Different shoot, different shoot, not the same one? Shoot. No, same oh, shoot. Oh, oh, okay. There were two shots. One was going to be Dita in full glam, but oh, oh, oh. the editor was like insistent that we shoot Dita pared down and 
And it's so funny because, you know, and then it's like, what do you do? You're there, you're literally on set. And it's, and it puts you in a really awkward position because, you know, what's Dita going to do? Well, I'm not doing that and storm off the set or. We negotiate. We negotiate. We go, we get a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I even negotiated with Ruben a fan, or not Ruben a fan, or sorry, um, what was the shoot that we did uh, for Vanity Fair? No. Are you thinking oh, Bazaar? Peter Lindbergh? Yes, Peter Lindbergh. Well, that might be the shoot I was talking about. Oh, <laughs> oh well, it doesn't matter because it's Peter no, Lindbergh no. negotiated with us. So how did that look? And how did well, that look? Exactly, they was, said one glamour shot, one au naturel shot in a white crisp shirt, relaxed. And it was, kind of, it was beautiful. It was kind of like, it reminded me of like- Oh God, yes, I know the picture. I know the picture. Like Ava Gardner, like, you know, in between scenes in a movie and just kind of letting her hair down for a second to get but what was the negotiation how did that how did that look negotiation was basically like i remember saying like can we do one picture with like the makeup at the end and we did and that picture ran too so and that one was kind of like a dress that had kind of like a white hood yes yes oh my god i remember beautiful it really is um but the look that I loved of yours that I just sent you guys yesterday was the one, I think, Danielle, who did the hair uh, for the, the colored wigs? The, the gray, the silver fox. Yes. That's who? Tony Medina. Oh, it is? Oh, oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, I love that. What's the story behind that shoot? Um, I was shooting, I had this like concept for one of my show tours that, I did this, my exact same hair look um, as like a red hair Dita, blonde Dita, and then normal me, and then the silver fox me. And so we did exactly the same hair and kind of like had those characters kind of all photographed and then put together doing things. And so um, it was just part of like that, that shoot that we did. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then I feel like some, I just recently, did you just use it again recently for something? Did you, do you, how do you, um, I feel like you probably have a story about how you acquire the images from your shoots. Um, well, that was an Albert Sanchez who, you know, I collaborate with Albert Sanchez a lot because we, you know, he brings a lot to the table. I'll say like, Hey, and, and also we work really easy. It's like, Love you know, like me, I go over there and um, either it's like we go, I go to his house or he comes to my house with, with Pedro, who is, you know, kind of art directing. And, you know, sometimes I, I'll either have do all my own hair and makeup or like Gregory will do it or Tony will do a wig or, you know, it's just kind of like we can do whatever. Like I can just go over there and do stuff on my own or I can do stuff with Gregory and it's always very easy and there's no fuss and there's not like a crew and there's no, like, we just go over there and shoot stuff for fun. And it's, you know, we shoot a lot of stuff for my tours and for whatever I need, but we're not, you know, we're very like a low key team, which has been amazing to know those kinds of people that can work that way, especially during this COVID time where we're like, you know, can have four people in the room and we can make amazing pictures. Yeah. Yeah, have you guys been able to do anything together in this shutdown, since the we shutdown? We haven't just yet, ah. I mean, we will. I mean, and it's so funny because there were a couple, like one or two things that came up that unfortunately I wasn't available to do, but I have worked very, very minimally during COVID and it's weird. And it's as long as it's like set up the right way, everyone's tested and it's all the protocols are in place, um, then it's, but it's still weird. <laughs> yeah, I know. But you know, it, and it, it's, it's, there's so much of it that's, it, it goes beyond trust. It's not even about that. It's just about like being as safe as possible. Right. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. What, what, um, um, oh my God, look at this beautiful. I, I was just like, I is know. that okay, you guys? Or do I need to go I play? I love it. Like, this sun's is like setting and shining through the window. And I'm like, what is going on? The this is bright. amazing. Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Cause it's like four o'clock over there. Right. It's like, yeah. you know, it's like seven here. Um, okay. it's weird I can't even see it coming through, but it, I can see it on the screen. It's God, it's gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. I'm directing this, but I'm here for it. Leave it. <laughs> I, I, I mean, we can I can get up and go move it. 
you know, I have a shade right there. It's no, really do not touch it. Do you not touch unless it's bothering you. It's no, not at gorgeous. all. Gorgeous. And I'm sure it's going to be gone in a moment anyway. Aww, chasing the light. It's gotten mm-hmm. brighter as we've been doing this. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Um, did you guys have you learned anything from Dita? And has Dita, Dita, had, did you learn anything from Gregory that surprised you? Yeah, yeah. I'm always trying to do my brows like Gregory does my brows. Really? How's it different? So always, you know, like, oh God, how does Gregory do those brows? Oh my yeah. God. I, um, I thought of thing off the top of my head, you know, literally off the top of my head. Uh, how do you well, do, how do you do them? That's a high brow moment. Only you. Only you. Oh, I've learned many things from Dita. I mean, it's, it's amazing because one thing, and it's funny because I'm a Virgo and I like to think of myself as a perfectionist and I've been doing makeup for a long time. But one thing I really did learn from Dita, which is, is to tilt your chin up to really make sure the bottom lip is as perfect as the top lip, no matter what. Sometimes it goes into what I call the twilight zone when you're doing someone's makeup and you just feel it gliding. You need to lift and check. <gasps> you're so, so that's right. Good tip. Oh, that's good, Dita. I feel um, like I like harassed a lot of makeup artists about that, but like, what about this? You know, <laughs> did you get my lip? Did you get my lip? Yeah. Well, those no, are the what? things. Oh my god! I think of all the various makeup artists that I've completely like been a pain in the ass for. You I know? can't. Like, no. No. Yeah. Thank sure. God. Not like in a bad way, in a mean way, or anything, but yeah. just in a like, hey, um. Hmm, do you see this? You know, or like, do you mind if I just? Do you have a? <laughs> Do you mind using this? You, know? you have a wipe? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> like but, well, but usually I try to delicately just like sneak into the, the bathroom and go fix it. You? you I've never yourself? done that to Gregory because we can, we can. Also, the other thing about having a great makeup artist or hair person is when you can be like, dude, what about this? You know, like I can't, you know, I like working with people that you can be free about it. And they're not going to get offended. And so I think, you know, that. I mean, she's, you know, there's I definitely work with people who are not Tita. Yeah. <laughs> who will remain nameless. <laughs> Come on, just drop one name. No, 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 no I but I, you know, every, everyone's yeah, yeah, energy is, of course, so contingent. And there's some people where it's like, you know, I mean, Dita said it from our first shoot. I mean, it's, you just have a connection, you know, you, you connect, Absolutely. You click, it's easy. We have a definitely an unspoken language. Absolutely. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's, that's really important when it comes to that relationship. But Dita, you, I mean, you're really, both of you are really special. I, I, I just felt so, I feel like I've known both of you forever, even though I never get to be with you in the same room. And like, but, but both of you, I can say are the most open and welcoming people. Like there's nothing, nothing that sets you uh, on guard or anything about you. So I imagine that the two of you would be a match made in heaven, but you know, if it's, it's chemical, right? It's, it's, we we are, but we usually need like timing police on, cause we will like, you know, get lost in how much fun we're having and be like, oh, oh. and be like, how much longer? We're like, oh, buzzkill. You know, like we can totally. get a little bit like, the you know, we gotta pick up the pace because we can really flap our jaws. Do you get in trouble for talking on set? <laughs> yeah, totally. so trouble for like too many, too many behind the scenes things and too much, you know. Oh, go down sure. Oh, look at this epic fail. And we start to go down. Oh, yeah. Dita and I have a very loony <laughs> sense of humor that not yeah. a lot of people get. <laughs> Honestly, I, I mean, I feel like I've had an ab workout after the best, Gregory, the best, Dita, I don't know if I told you this, but on New Year's Eve last year, Gregory, uh, somebody had met him several times, right? And so Gregory was like, oh, hi, I'm Gregory. And he was like, yeah, I've met you a million times, you know? And Gregory was like, well, and he just kept going and he says, well, you know, you have glasses. So I didn't know. Cause he goes, I've never taken my glasses off. And Gregory was like, anyway, okay. Moody. Wait, who was that? No. It was Armin's. Uh, oh, well, that's so Armin. It was who? <laughs> it was a friend of Armin's. Oh, yeah. I was like, it wasn't Armin. A friend Armin. of Armin. No, Armin. I wonder. A friend it of was Armin. Armin. I was like, wait, he doesn't wear glasses, but I can totally see him like this. Like, 
Do you remember met me. I'm always wearing rhinestone, you know. Calling like, him right? out on it. And, and Gregory yeah. was like, he, he was like, I, I really want to find another excuse, but I don't have, but yet I don't have time. Like, and you a woman? That's it. You were yes. a woman right now. <laughs> I wouldn't <bring> anything. <laughs> I get bad social amnesia sometimes, but uh, I know it happens to the best of us. I mean, please, time is flying. Um, now, you guys said that your philosophies on um, beauty were were you know matching. Did do, do, what? Do you have one that you can think of? Your philosophy on beauty. I mean, I know Dita, you've written about it at great length, but can you summarize it? <laughs> I mean, all kinds of things come to mind. You know, my first thought is like, I love that quote, which I'm sure could be made a little bit less uh, harsh at this point, but I can't remember who said it. If it was, uh, you know, one of those great ladies of beauty, but something like, there's no such thing as an ugly woman, only a lazy one. You know, <laughs> who was that? that said that. I, 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 that's Sophia Loren. I can't remember. I no, no, no. It's like one of those beauty great, like Helena Rubinstein or somebody oh, like that. Like it's somebody like that, and I can't remember right now. But I love the sentiment of that. But I don't. I don't like the words ugly and a thing. I hate like that. You know. Um, so, but I like the idea of it. It's like there's. You know, for me, it's like I love the idea of glamour and creating glamour because even if you are not like beautiful you can be amazing and intriguing and mysterious and alluring and I feel like there's all these things you can do to build that myth yourself mm -hmm. and so you know I, I have glamour I think is the word because it's really a word that's related to magic and um which you know when I think about glamour I don't think about private jets I think about like creation and like mm -hmm. man-made beauty yes Yes, an effort. And I love man-made beauty. And listen, I like mountains. I like the ocean. I like the trees. But I really love like, you know, man-made beautiful things, artistic, gorgeous things that you're like, wow, well, somebody made that. So for me, makeup and like all of that, like glamour and creation of your yourself, your drag, you know, mm -hmm. what, how you choose to present yourself to the world um, is, you know, I, I love that. And I get really like, excited about people that choose to be who they want to be oh I like that yes it is a choice right yeah mm -hmm. what about I you Greg? I mean listen there's a, there's like degrees of choice I don't ever like to say that because I know like there's people that have you have some choices not everybody can be putting you know spending time putting on makeup or whatever and, and there's a million reasons why somebody could be watching going well I can't do that you know but it's the idea of it you know the idea that there yeah. are we choose what our thing is and, you know, it can be, give you confidence yes. in life. Yes, 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 yes. My okay. answer is what she said. <laughs> okay. Nice. And that is why it's love. I, we totally, no, a hundred percent. I mean, I've been asked this question and I, and I never get tired of it. I've been asked since I picked up a makeup brush for the first time. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, cause it literally is the end of the day right now. At the end of the day, <laughs> It really is all going to come from within. You know, I can make someone look good and I can do my best to make them feel good, but it's up to them. It's up to them to feel good. Right. Yes. What but do you do? Have you ever had that helpless feeling when like if Dita is having a bad day and just like just doesn't feel great getting in front of the camera? Have you had that experience together? Like, can I, you fix it? <laughs> you know, I think... I mean, I'll, maybe you have a different memory, but I've I've never seen that side. Yes, of course, there's times where it's like, oh my gosh, it's it's we've been like Dita and I have traveled together and done a lot of press stuff together, and it might be like day seven in Japan and the jet lag, yeah, kicked that, in, yeah. you're tired or whatever. Right. But you know, we're consummate professionals. That's the end, and and I I can read the room if I see someone's energy is low or what have you like you know there's a little bit of a court gesture in me and try like let's make it fun you know we're here today let's try to enjoy it we've rolled our eyes together we've laughed together <laughs> you know there's been so many so many different things and i think at the end of the day i mean i i can't be responsible for someone's feelings but i certainly can show up as a professional and also let's let's make it fun let's try to enjoy this as much as we can 
I feel like I always just feel kind of, you know, I might drag my feet a little, especially I have this weird thing where I go from like the maybe two to three hours of hair and makeup and I'm dragging my feet going, I don't really want to get dressed now and start the actual work. But then, you know, as soon as I get that first shot, I'm fine. And, you know, we've also, I think that we've done some shoots that were kind of hardcore, like as far as I was going through a divorce and it was not easy, but like it helps to be, that's, that's where it comes in handy to be working with somebody that you really like, because when things happen and you're having a terrible time in your like home life or whatever it is, or there's something going on, it's nice to arrive to people that you know, and you know, can like do the makeup the way you want it. So you don't have to like, be like, I can't deal with this either right now, you know? So that's one reason I think it's really important to kind of assert yourself um, and say who you want to work with as the person who's, who's um, being photographed. And, uh, you know, listen, I always say there's a difference between photographing models and models. And it's like, it's, that's their job to show up and be the model. I'm not a model. You know, I'm usually there to either, you know, it, a lot of things are press things and I'm there to, you know, have it be part of an overall thing and I'm not getting paid. So it should be a pleasurable experience yes. and not torturous. Yes. I also think, Tiffany, if I can piggyback on that, that's a good home word. Um, no, but truly, I think that, you know, I think it's a makeup artist's responsibility also to check in with someone, you know, like, hey, how do you, how's this? Do you like this? Do you like this shape? Should we go bigger? Do you think, you know what I mean? And just being collaborative. I mean, I'm definitely, I'm definitely a convicted, not for that felony, but no, I'm like, I have my convictions, but I'm also not a it's my way or the highway kind of makeup artist. Right. I think it's so important to collaborate and so important to respect somebody's brand. Again, I that agree. Word, but it's true, you know, like to to keep it in that, you know, in that space and to make sure that you're on the same page. I can relate to that so much too, because there's, you know, my way or the highway filmmakers as well. And, you know, it's like, you have to get them to do this and you have to get them to do that. And, and you know, and, and I think in the same sense that you're talking about with makeup, it's like, what is the point of that? What, you know what I mean? If that's not something someone wants to do, what joy do you get out of do, you know, presenting that? It doesn't make any sense to me. What good is it for you to do the makeup that you've always dreamed of doing on Dita? If she's, you can feel the energy of her being just like, you just, peed all over me I don't mean to be gross but like <laughs> but like you just did your thing all over me now <laughs> you know on I mean I, it, 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 I mean the good thing about working with someone like Dita or some of the other women that I work with I mean there there is an open-mindedness and I realize I'm not saying that Dita is has to look one certain way I mean there is a little wiggle room here and there but it also has to make sense it has to make sense yeah to it has to feel good Dita. it has to make sense to the shoot to the clothes to yeah. the vibe you know the list goes on and that's also going back to the silver fox look that's one of the most fun things about that shoot because like you know we played around with like a a dusty aqua eyeshadow and that might just be one eyeshadow to somebody but then throwing it on this shoot that kind of tells this whole story it when it starts to make sense you know it's like wow the glasses yeah. went on <laughs> i know because i'm such a i'm no i, I thought know. oh my gosh it's getting serious <laughs> I'm, listen now for the real story between but behind right. the silver fox so what do you do come on spill the secrets here what how, how do, do you do that it? i can't tell you know explain <laughs> it i just I, when, when i look at somebody you know i i've when i was a child i'll i all i ever did was doodle eyebrow a cat eye and a little beauty mark it's Stop. like I, you were meant to I, be like with I Dita. Her. <laughs> but it's true i really did and oh i i God. i really loved eyebrows and looking at the relationship between a brow and a face and you know we've done a couple different types sometimes i it's more the the end of the brow where like sometimes will come up like a little sort of parisian ballerina but i always think kind of like elizabeth like, taylor meets marilyn monroe but so you have an image of of the brow and then you transfer that on to dita mm -hmm. pretty much. yeah yeah and expecting then her own she has a nice shape and then how do you, I know that her skin, because I've seen it without makeup on, 
that it is not real skin. It is like um, something you could buy like for your kitchen. It's like porcelain. Yeah, it's, yeah you get it from water for it. It's <laughs> La Leak. It's La Leak. Right. Then 2020 came. Right. Exactly. <laughs> So do you, do you have to use foundation on her though? But you do to even out the colors, of course. Yeah. Here's the thing. What I love about Gita besides everything is that it's, it really is the real life process. It's foundation, it's powder, it's, there's steps to it. It's like an old school makeup routine, you know? And, you know, we sometimes, we don't, for me personally, I've even with anybody, I've never really been a huge fan of contouring. I'm not mm -hmm. opposed to it. You know, there's little things here and there, but for me, it's more about highlighting and bringing features forward. Every single person I've talked to this week has said that. It's so funny. Really? Like, yeah. And I mean, not like, you know, like, like, you know, like, of your caliber like the the highlight is the key not the contour and i think that that's you really do a great job with that with dita i mean her it, the cheeks are always like it opens up the whole face but also too like when you think of again someone like dita we're just going to talk about like, you like you're not here obviously i know i'm like Geez. and she's leaving right getting more <laughs> <Later>. <laughs> No, but I was going to say, when you think of how pristine and I, you know, the perfection of the look with the hair being the shape and the clothing, why wouldn't you want the skin to be elevated from that? I mean, you know, it's like, let's just make everything sort of hyper real with the whole look and it, and it works. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's all, sh it's illuminated and not shiny, right? Cause you, you put powder on today, didn't you Dita? Yeah. Yeah. But it still looks like your skin. You don't look matte at all to me. Or I, think or, I, I mean, I think there's always a difference between like what I do in real life and what I mm. do when there's bright lights. In the How, what are some and differences I, that you do? I mean, I try to use less uh -huh. foundation and concealer and all that in real life, like it, or in day to day life really. But, um, for TV and video, you really got to like put on that studio fix, like yeah. honestly. Um, I've learned that the hard way. And all you have to do is watch the news and watch people that go on there that have not powdered down properly. But it's a real thing that heavy makeup just looks better on TV. But like I am very conscientious of making sure that I don't have too much because it kind of settles into lines and it, it can make you, it can age you. Yeah. So I kind of try... Um, you know, especially like the la this last year, I've been very like wearing minimal makeup and focusing on like keeping my skin good and maybe just a little concealer and, you know, a light sweep of powder and maybe like a little like moisturizing mist over the top of it because I just don't want to feel like, you know, I hate I because with light skin too, I think it can look chalky sometimes if you have the wrong foundation or too many things. So I'm kind of like, very conscientious about that although I love makeup so I kind of it's just depends on whether I'm being filmed or whether I'm just talking to some, you know around right. in the daytime right right and my, it's funny because my boyfriend is always like hey can't you can't you just like wear your cat eye and the red lips and no foundation because he's like your skin's so amazing and I was like but it's a little bit like primer you can paint something and if you don't prime it then it's not going to stay. So I'm always trying to explain that of why you can't just like put the cat eye on with no, like, you know, you have to have primer and yes. foundation and powder is that primer. And then yes. he tried to explain baseball to you. <laughs> it's very different. <laughs> how, how, so the cat eye, I feel like it has the same um, life, you know, it can take, how, what's the longest you've spent doing her cat eye? Gregory it really like, depends you know is it two I, seconds is it no I, <laughs> not I, really. honestly, can you imagine wow. no two second cat eye I mean if I had to but I think there's always like elements there like there could be a blink there could be oh shoot my my gel liner is a little drier than it was last week and you know there's so many different things there's a lot of different maybe somebody might be looking down at their phone I don't know <laughs> Um, me, no, no. I have the idea of a, a fastest cat eye in the West, like a competition for makeup artists. Like, yeah. see so you can draw the fastest and best cat eye. And just so you come up with it, you're like, you've got five seconds. 
go. Oh like, what are, what are you doing that? Glow up. That's like that show Glow Up when they have yeah. to do the like, you know, oh. five minutes. I haven't seen yeah. that. Well, well it's that exact scenario, but it just depends. Oh. Sometimes it's like with anything, we have good days. Sometimes it's a little bit more of a struggle and you have to go back over things. Is your favorite I Black love- Tracks? Black it, Tracks do you usually? Favorite. Yeah, mine too. That's, I, I love still, that. I love when the cat eye almost meets the flick of the brow. That's what we always joke about. It's like, wow, it's like uh, two millimeters away from touching, by the way. <laughs> what if it is connected? Right. Can you make that ha- happen? Let's make that look happen next, where it just connects. Connected. That's <laughs> very Susie Sue, though. Remember Susie yeah. Sue had the eyebrow and then the liner? Oh, and it was yes. Connects. I'm yes. here for it. Whenever you want to do that, do that. Let's call Albert. Okay. I, that. <laughs> I will. <laughs> for sure. But like everything, you know, there's, it's funny because just like, you know, the old joke with the makeup artist where, you know, wow, that's a really thick eyeliner you did. Well, I had to, I kept messing up. So I was going back and doom, forth. Doom, 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 doom. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, I've, been there. I've been there where I have to just like, just take it all off myself, yeah. you know. And really- I just go as big, go just bigger. You go bigger. Bigger. Yeah, I go yeah. always like bigger, bigger, bigger. Oh my God. It's a nightmare. People don't know who don't have to go through it. Right. Right. Um, What else can we talk about? Let me see. Well, how long have we been talking? Am I taking up all of your time? I'm so wary. Oh my God. We've been talking for an hour. This. Really? (laughs) I'm so sorry. You guys. You're going to laugh because my, the light got all weird in here. So I'm holding my light now here. So it looks like I'm land a plane. It's like, (laughs) Hi. <laughs> I'm like, should I move it? No, that's dark. So I'm just going to be right here because it's getting dark. Dito was visited by God and now right. you, you're God, physically God, moving it. Like, now my lighting is done by LAX, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, no, but I, I honestly, this has been so refreshing for me. I can't even tell you, you guys. <laughs> uh, well, good things come to those who wait. I mean, I can't you know, tell you how much I have appreciated the waiting and the going back and forth on all of this. And I just appreciate it so much. And I'm, I'm going to trick you into doing something like this again, for sure. I'm in. And especially when we, you know, get somebody to shoot that where it connects yeah. right here. Let's get that on the books, Tita. Yeah. I mean, what else are we doing? I have nothing but time on my well sanitized hands. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you until next time. I hope you guys had fun with us. Thanks for hanging out with us. I wonder if you guys are watching on YouTube and you saw when those Jesus rays came through to Dita's dressing room there. Let me know if you caught that because that was pretty amazing. Um, Next week, we have an amazing guest. How many times do you guys drink every time I say amazing? I'm just curious. I mean, listen. I'm not gonna even go there because there's probably a lot of things that you have drinking games set to, like how every time I laugh or every time I say interesting or every time I say amazing, but he truly is amazing. And it's Mario, yes. We're talking to Mario Dedabonovic and we'll be talking about um, an iconic look that he created for a certain iconic event. I'm sure you can guess what it is, um, but there are so many to choose from. And that was just one of many, 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 many incredible looks that we had to choose from. So we'll see you then. Oh, I wanted to mention that um, I am trying a new product and I'm gonna keep you posted about how effective it is. It's a product that my girl Nikki, who does my brows, recommended to me. It's called New Brow and I just started using it today and I'm going to be using it for the next couple of weeks and I want to share with you how effective it is because I heard it is a miracle and I will tell you the truth. Take care and I will see you soon. Look Behind the Look is a Vinyl Foot production written by me, your host, Tiffany Bartok, produced by Jace Bartok and produced and edited by Kelly Riley with audio engineering by Nicole Tucker. If you're interested in learning more, find our video version on the YouTube channel, Look Behind the Look Podcast. There you can see rare photos and clips from our guests. And please follow us on Twitter at Look Behind Pod and Instagram at Look Behind the Look. If you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe. And tell your friends and spread the word. You can subscribe to us on iTunes or any podcatcher of your choice. Thanks for listening to Look Behind the Look.